Lucas Moscos is a virologist and an associate professor at the University of Northumbria. He joins me now from there. Uh, Sturgia, we just heard these two different positions. Uh, the UK, where the vaccine is being rolled out. The EU, Belgium, where it's there's still a lot of reticence. We're waiting for approval. Which way is the right way, would you say? Its uh, country has set itself out to uh, review and approve any new medication that comes through. In this particular instance, we have a very specific issue, and that issue is emergency use. So, whatever the EMA has in place for emergency use authorization, the process needs to be followed appropriately, and people need to be patient for that to take place as necessary. How excited were you to see this vaccine being rolled out in the UK, at least, where you are? Look, um, it is very exciting to see the first few people uh, being vaccinated. But I've been in this game, if you like, for a long time. I've been studying uh, on and off viruses and uh, other pathogens, as well as vaccines and uh, gene therapies for the you know, best part of 20 years. This is going to take time to have any kind of impact into society and economy. The individuals that got vaccinated today won't be really protected till a month from now. And uh, after that, those around them won't be protected till they receive the vaccine. So we're talking about very small steps. As many put it, this is V-Day or the equivalent of D-Day. We've just landed in Normandy, but Berlin is many, many months ahead of us. We're not going to be looking at anything like normality till, I would say, June at the earliest. There still is a question about transmission for many people. Can you explain to us this vaccination protects you from catching the virus, but it doesn't keep you from spreading? Is that correct? No, actually, that's not correct. This vaccine protects you from actually becoming ill from the virus. Um, it doesn't, there isn't data at the moment to confirm whether or not you become infected and or whether or not you virus to other people. What about the infrastructure surrounding the transport and the storage of the vaccine? There have been a lot of reservations about that. Do you yourself have any fears that there could be a problem along the supply chain? So there has been some um, discussion around the supply chain, even at manufacturing stage, and how that may have slowed down a little bit the production. It's unclear whether or not this is um, factually based. Uh, but there will be also issues around the availability of the vaccine to the individual. So here in the UK, we've set up a, a central line disseminating the vaccine. We've set up a, a way of uh, prioritizing individuals and so on and so forth. In developing nations, we won't necessarily have this kind of infrastructure available. And dare I say, some parts of Europe, uh, we may not have the necessary uh, freezers that are required to transport the vaccine. Um, the good news is that for a good week after it's taken out of the minus city and put to normal um, refrigeration, the vaccine is still useful. So you have that window of opportunity to uh, administer the vaccine. So with a little bit of careful planning and uh, careful handling, I think we will manage to get through this over the next in a way that's productive. Uh, there's been some resistance to this vaccine, particularly here in France, where many people say they just don't want to take it. What would you say to reassure people who say they don't want the vaccine? Look, I've got a three and a half year old son. If I could put him at the front of the line without putting somebody else at the back of the line, I would have done it this, this, this morning. I have worked in this field for 20 years and there's nothing in these vaccines and the way they're made that makes me worry that they may not be safe. Uh, for anyone in society, apart from people, perhaps, perhaps, that are uh, immunocompromised. And even then, what it's likely to do is just generate something in them uh, that the body just doesn't respond to. So I, I really want people to understand that we've got 30 years of knowledge on how to make this brand new kind of vaccine that's built up to this point. It's not something that somebody dreamt up on a sketch of paper in January and we've gone from zero to hero in 12 months. There's 30 years of work behind this that have culminated to this point. And there are other people that have received these kind of treatments uh, in the past few years. So if there was something untoward, A, we would have seen it already. B, we have heard other problems from other people, from other diseases that have been uh, attempted with these vac vaccines. And C, 
we will know if something happens because all countries will have very strong surveillance systems in place to make sure any severe adverse events are recorded and decisions are taken quickly to prevent any damage to the public. We will all get a bit of a bump, we will all get a little bit of fever, a little bit of malaise. We may not remember it from since we were children, but we may remember our children being vaccinated and how they were. And this is going to be one of those. And after that, after the two doses, that's it. We can all start coming back to normal. Stergio, thanks so much for taking the time to speak to us. Stergio is Moscow's a virologist and associate professor at the University of Northumbria. Thank you.